Your Excellency, Dr. Robert Gabriel Mugabe, President of the Republic of Zimbabwe and Chairperson of the African Union. <coughs> Your Excellency, Mr. Jacob Zuma, President of the Republic of South Africa and our gracious host. Your Excellency's Heads of State and Government, your Excellency Dr. Nkosabza Nathamini Zuma, Chairperson of the African Union Commission, Your Excellency's distinguished delegates, allow me to acknowledge with a deep sense of humility the privilege accorded me to address this 25th ordinary session of the Assembly of Heads of State and Government of the African Union as the newly elected Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Lesotho. I wish to express my sincere gratitude to our host, His Excellency President Jacob Zuma, for the warm welcome and hospitality, as well as excellent facilities extended to me and my delegation since our arrival in South Africa, Lesotho's closest neighbor and a country with which Lesotho enjoys inextricable ties because of our history, our culture, and our geography. As we often say in Lesotho, Lesotho is, is not only landlocked, she is South Africa law. Chairperson, this generous gesture offered, uh, allocated to us to address the August Assembly <coughs> bears testimony to the resolve of our continental organization to encourage member states to stay resolute on the path of democracy and to applaud the triumph of constitutionalism and the rule of law in our individual countries. I've been democratically elected once more as Prime Minister of Lesotho. After serving more than two years as a member of the opposition in our National Assembly, before that, I had been honored to serve for some years in this same capacity of Prime Minister of my country. I am humbled by the trust and heavy responsibility which the people of Lesotho have reposed in me to lead them through these turbulent times to peace, stability, and socioeconomic development. This time around, I have been further been heartened by the trust of six of Lesotho's political parties, which have formed a coalition government with the party I am privileged to lead. My coalition partners and I are painfully aware that Lesotho had been on the agenda of SADC for too long and for the wrong reasons. Consequently, the second coalition government is committed to a reform pro process that will affect various state institutions, including coming up with a new national constitution for the suit. We are therefore pleased to invite member states of the AU to remain seized with uh, this reform program and to extend the requisite support where necessary. Chairperson, I'm aware that the suit I beg your pardon. I'll read that again. 
I am aware that I joined this assembly of heads of state and government at a trying but interesting time. Two years ago, at the milestone of 50 years since the establishment of our organization, you resolved to share the image of Africa as a continent of conflict, instability, and economic stagnation. You decided to take a giant leap forward by implementing Agenda 2063 that will take us to the Africa we want. An Africa that is integrated, prosperous, and peaceful. Today, I stand here to pledge Lesotho's commitment to work with you in the pursuit of this lofty ideal. I do not underestimate the challenges and hurdles that still lie ahead of achieving the aspirations of our continent and her peoples. These problems range from foreign interference in domestic affairs, sporadic political unrest, terrorism, and radical extremism, to employment, rather to unemployment, marginalization of women, and mass migra migration that has led to thousands of African people dying in the Mediterranean Sea. These problems are exacerbated by the resistance of the big powers to reform the United Nations Security Council to render it more representative and accommodate the voice of Africa, among others. Talking about the UN Security Council reform, let me seize this opportunity to urge you, Your Excellencies, to stay the course, maintain the common Africa position articulated in the Ezulini Consensus. That position is right, it is reasonable, it is realistic. So let us not renege from it. The Americans say, if it ain't break, don't fix it. Agenda 2063 must succeed in achieving its objectives. But to succeed, it demands from us transformational leadership and strong political commitment. During this session, hopefully, we shall be adopting the implementation plan of Agenda 2063 for the next 10 years. The African people are excited about this initiative and expect from it implementation of priority programs and concrete projects that have been identified, including time frames for the implementation of these projects, as well as strategies for mobilization of resources. This should go a long way in helping us share the now common perception that the AU summit is no more than a grand talk shop. The theme of this 25th Ordinary Assembly of heads of state and government underscores a clear recognition that it is impossible to overcome our challenges and to achieve our continental goals without the empowerment of women, without their contribution, and without their full involvement in the political life and decision-making in their communities. It is highly symbolic that today we renew our commitment to the empowerment of women in the year that marks the 20th anniversary of the adoption of the Beijing Declaration and its platform of action. 
This year also marks the mid-term anniversary of the African Women Decade that started in 2010. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Africa has been able to overcome its challenges of yesteryears, namely colonialism and apartheid, through unity and collective action. With the necessary political will and determination, we shall also, also overcome the problems that today stand between us and the Africa we want. One of these is the remaining bastion of, colo of colonialism in Western Sahara, where the Sahrawi people are still denied their right to self-determination and independence. Africa is not free as long as the Sahrawi people still languish in colonialism. we must place new agency on the political emancipation of Western Sahara. We are driven in that quest by the vision that was bequeathed to us by the great African leaders who came before us, such as Kwame Nkrumah, Julius Nyerere, Jomo Kenyatta, Nelson Mandela, and many others of their generation. We also draw our inspiration from our contemporary elders, the stalwarts of Africa's liberation, such as Dr. Robert Mugabe, Abdelaziz Bouteflika, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, Sekitimi Lemasire, and others who, by the grace of God, are still with us today. Jefferson, I cannot conclude without paying a deserving tribute to the countries of our sub-region, Sadak, for standing with Lesotho through a difficult time and for making sacrifices in order to help us conduct free and fair elections in February this year. I also wish to thank the African Union, our continental organization, for sending a team led by former Prime Minister of Kenya, Dr. Raila Odinga, to observe our elections. I know that our success is also your success. We thank you most heartily. Allow me once again to reaffirm the commitment of the new government of Lesotho to work closely with you and all member states of our continental organization in realizing the unity, solidarity, cohesion, cooperation, and development of our peoples. In conclusion, Your Excellencies, and as those wonderful boys and girls reminded us this afternoon in the African Union. Let us make Africa the tree of life, our pride and our hope at the break of dawn. Let us give the best we have for Africa by defeating in our time the great challenges facing our peoples. I thank you. God bless Africa. Mm.